Hi, welcome to ToddFun.com. And today we're gonna to do a long overdue hack for my uh, GE G35 LED Christmas lights. You've seen me, if you've watched all my videos, you've seen that I've done a complete teardown of these in one video and gave a, an opinion that I didn't like them. I didn't like the colors. And you only get 14 options from the remote that comes with it and they're not Christmassy at all. Uh, and I wanna be able to program. I wanna be able to change those colors and change those patterns. And so that's what this hack is. I'll also link to that uh, video as well as another video where I cover, uh, I had a problem where I wanted one strand this way and one strand this way at a peak, and I wanted them to be in sync, and they would always be out of sync, and so it looked stupid. So I basically had a video where I take the control module, this little green brick, and I take the data line off of one and I just splice it into the other one, essentially abandoning one of these boxes. It was a real quick hack, it worked great. I've had it up there for years, that way one strand will be in sync with the other strand and the house doesn't look so stupid. But still, the colors are stupid and that's what I wanna change this time. One of my viewers, um, he contacted me and said, hey, he saw, he saw a instructable that was uh, programming this very set all the code and everything was pretty much done and it was using an RF Duino. Uh, you can get an RF Duino with, in a kit with the programming module. So there's the uh, RF Duino and there's a the programming module and the RF Duino uses uh, uh, Bluetooth uh, to be controlled programmatically by your phone. So essentially if you can send signals from your phone wirelessly and you can program the uh, they're essentially the Arduino clone on this little board. You can then control these lights. So all the work was done for me, really. Uh, I just had to follow that instructable. Uh, but there was some convolution and there was some easier ways to do things. And getting it up and running and wasn't... I, would, I, would, I, just, uh, I just pity people who have to try and follow all that. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and line it all up. I've got sort of a to-do list that I'm going to go through. Uh, I'm also going to post it at toddfun.com for the setup. So if you go out and get one of these $43 RF Duino kits from Mauser, I'll have a link to that too. Uh, I'll show you how I modified mine. You'll notice there's a, there's a wire on mine. I modified mine to make this hookup really simple, really easy, and bam, you're done. And then of course, not so easy, but it'll be easy if you follow the instructions, how to go through, put all the code in the right place so that your, um, so your Arduino IDE will come up and actually see and communicate with, with your RF Duino. It wasn't as straightforward getting everything in place as, as it could have been. And I really didn't want to change it a lot. I just wanted to change it just enough so that the instructions were very clear. Uh, so that other people can say, hey, I've got a set of these, either the 50 count, the 25 count, maybe the 35 count. Um, it'll work with any of them. Uh, you just have to change in the program how many lights you have so that it enumerates them correctly. And then sky's the limit what you want to do with the code. Now, this hack uses a, uh, an iPhone app that you can download for free called the Color Wheel. And it's basically just a color wheel with colors on it and you tap what color you want or you can change, uh, well, we'll see it later. But it's a pretty poor app. It doesn't have any hardly features. But I've thought of some clever ways of not changing the app, leave it as is, and yet still have some uh, uh, advanced programming, essentially backdoor programming, leaving the app alone and just changing what's on the Arduino. And we'll, we'll show that too. And I'll zip all my code up, stick it up out a zip file at Todd Fun, put a link for that so that you don't have to rewrite any of that and you can you have access to that. And it'll be some of the code that I've already gotten from these other uh, people that have shared their material. Uh, but ultimately, that's, the, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to cover it so you can do it. Then I'm going to do one more hack. As you know, I, I do the splicing deal. And I don't want to do the splicing deal anymore, so I'm going to cut these out. I'm going to cut these all out, so the only thing left is the RF Duino. And I got a third strand that's farther away on another peak. Now, you cannot just run a data line and power line from one of these packs, you know, 30, 40 feet to the next peak. It just, the data won't get there. And, and I had a viewer tell me, that he wanted to do so, and I explained to him, you know, the data in, is gonna, you're gonna have syncing problems, it's just gonna be a headache. And sure enough, he found out it was. But, he also got clever too. And he, he used some really heavy uh, 12 gauge wire stranded and to decrease the loss, and he squeaked out 20 feet. 
and I was up measuring on my roof and I got to go just under 20 feet. So if he squeaked out 20 feet, uh, just the data line, um, not the power, not the ground, you got to basically have your, you, you got to have your brick plugged in at the source of the lights. But he was able to take and daisy over or downstream essentially the data line by sending a 12 gauge copper wire stranded and for the data and another 12 gauge stranded copper wire for the ground so the grounds would be together um, just for signal integrity and he had a little bit of flakiness near the end of that long string but for the most part he said it was stable all the time so we'll be doing that too um, the reason that's a part of this hack is because I want all my lights to go up on the roof and I want to put a sign out by my street or in front of my house that says hey if you download the uh, color app wheel and I'll have information on the sign you can control my lights on my house and so the neighbors and so forth who people driving by who download the app will be able to play color wheel with my house and I'm going to have some program features too essentially if they send all zeros it's going to do a particular type of a program not just blank if you do all you know basically there'll be certain fixed numbers that will do a color a color pattern or something that I like and I'll put that on the plaque too so people can know that by sending certain number sequences R G and B they'll get certain program features rather than fixed colors and that's kind of how I'm working around the fixed I don't want to write a phone app that's all so let's take a look at how simple I, you can hook it up um, by following my instructions here and then we'll see it working and you should be able to do this too okay let's talk about the wiring we'll try and keep it real simple the lights come with a 5 volt regulator or 5 volt power brick if you will and uh, 5 amp and 3 amps the 5 volts and ground come out here normally they would go into this RF controller uh, the, the, the 5 volts and ground will come in, they just jump straight over and then on the outside wires the two outside ones 5 volts five volts comes out and ground comes out and the middle wire is the data wire that this is making the signals for the lights turning on and off and this is what we're replacing. We want to keep the power though so we're going to splice in uh, into the, the two outer lines we're going, to, we're going to splice in the red and the green for the 5 volts for the red and the ground is green. We want to have little pigtails coming off of them because we want 5 volts and ground going to our RF, RF Duino as well. And then for this third wire it's the middle wire, it's the center wire and we just want to splice off a yellow wire so that it uh, has the data going over to the RF Duino and the RF Duino can control the data line. Now once you cut all these to know what is what if you feel there's a rig, there's like three ridges on one of these wires that's the ground and on this side there's ridges on one side and that ridges mean it's the ground and then on the other side they're smooth that's power and on this one they're all, the wire is smooth and that's power five volts so that's how you keep them straight so you make sure you get your your red and your green and then for the red and the green the, the red I did a male and for the green I did a female uh, because it's going to make it easier to hook up to the RF Duino here in a minute and then for the data I used a female and that gets rid of this completely. Some of these do have a button on them because there's no RF, they just click a button. Uh, but if they are, they'll still work the same. You can get rid of this. Now, the RF Duino, this is the kit that come in. That's the number and you get both the RF Duino, which is that one, which is Bluetooth controlled by like your phone. And then you get the programming shield. Well, it's not a programmer. It's just a USB to serial adapter. Uh, it also has a three volt regulator on it because this is three volts. Um, and your USB is 5 volts, which is good. We're going to take advantage of both of those. So as you see, there's normally if you plug this all in to your USB, you get 5 volts, and the Arduino gets its 3 volts because it is a 3 volt regulator. But what I did is here's a picture of me soldering uh, this pigtail on uh, for the 5 volt side of the uh, USB, and then I put some hot glue on it for strain relief. What that means now is now when I'm not plugged into the computer, I can plug in to get power from this brick from this jumper wire. And so not only is this providing power for the lights, it's powering the shield, the uh, RF Duino shield. And the RF Duino shield with its 3 volt regulator is able to power the RF Duino because they stack together nicely. They stack like that. 
uh, when you're programming it, you just unplug it like this and you stick it in your computer and you program it. Don't program it when it's hooked up to this. That could be bad. <laughs> so unplug everything uh, when you program it. But when you're done programming it, it, it holds the program and it will uh, be controlled by your phone then. You just have to hook it up to this. And because I used male and female for the red wires, I just hook those together and that keeps that from being confused. And then I know that the uh, ground wire goes to the ground on this one. Normally the ground would be uh, marked right up here, but it falls through this stack shield and it comes down here. So there I have ground. And then the data line goes to pin six because that's what we programmed it for in the Arduino. And that starts up here. There's It's marked six right there. And you could plug in up there, but once again, it, it flows down through this stack. So I can plug in down here. And sometimes these are tight one way and loose another way, so find out which way is tighter. And then this will just go inside of like a little Tupperware box and uh, sealed up and then it'll just hang up there like this with the lights and then the, phones, the phone will be able to control it. Let's power it up and take a look at things. I positioned the camera so you can see the pile of lights on the floor and this is the Arduino spliced in and now I can plug it in and like I say I've changed the programming a bit so that it does things a little smarter. Um, I'll plug it in and as soon as this powers up I've got it set to default to red so that they all turn on to red but when you connect and disconnect from your phone it leaves them whatever, wherever you left them. That's another change I made to the code. So we'll, we'll come into our program here and you'll download the Color Wheel app and I'll have a link to that at Todd Fun. Uh, for this posting and it'll see an Arduino this means it sees one if you have multiple R RF Duinos there'll just be more of these but I only have one so I see the one and I say yeah I want to communicate with that one so I click it and it gives me a color wheel and so right away I can say well I'd rather change them all to green so I'll get over here and I'll tap green and they all turn green I say oh, I want blue oh, they're all blue and you know you can control the in the app here you can control you can say I want solid green by doing that and that sends off 255 for the green and zero for the other colors, the R, the R and B. But more importantly, uh, I, my backdoor hacking is I'm gonna write programs and I'll share them where all zeros will do something that's very Christmassy. And maybe like uh, something like, you know, you, could, you can actually click on one of these and say, you know, 55 for red and, and then that will be another program. But whatever I post on the plaque for people that you know are walking by, they'll see those numbers and they can type them in and they get special programs. Otherwise, they can just play around with the colors or the wheel. And that's gonna be great fun. This is the uh, single strand that's by itself on a different ridge line. I've always ran it separately, but now I want it to run off the same R R RF Duino controller. But I have to get that signal over to this strand. Normally this strand had one of these boxes, one of these control boxes, of course, I cut it out. And it's not so complicated. You gotta, you gotta use, I have tested it, it does work. Uh, you can probably push 20 feet with 12 gauge stranded um, for, for common ground and signal. Common ground is green, signal is black in this case. Uh, but I only have 17 feet is all I needed. I used uh, what I, extra stuff that I used to wire up my garage. I used 12 gauge stranded to pull through the conduit in my garage and I have a few hundred feet left over. So of course I just chopped off 17 feet of that wire tied about every, so, every six inches. And that's how I'm getting my common ground and data to this strand. I would recommend getting a uh, X number of feet, however many you need, under 20 feet of 12 gauge stranded extension cord. You can buy it by the linear foot at a hardware store with no ends, not too expensive. And then you don't have to zip tie it every so far, but it is a purchase, it is an added expense, but it would be the same gauge and it would be a single wire with two wires in it. So it would be less cumbersome to work with. Now, as far as wiring it up, you've still gotta have your power brick at this light source for the five volts. And the five volts just hooks up directly into the five volt line, the smooth wire on either side. Now the ground wire has to be common ground with the other Arduino, RF Duino and the other light set. So this common ground comes in, ties into the common ground for this power pack and then goes down for the, for the ground on the, on the strand of lights here. And that is the uh, wire with the ridges on it, the wire with the ridges. Now the center wire of course is your data 
and it just comes out and goes straight into whatever line you use for data. I'm using black for data here. And uh, this then will get the signals from the other set, in my case 17 feet away. I have a viewer who said he made 20 feet and I have tested, it does work quite nicely. We'll see that in a minute. But first I'm going to put some more shrink wrap I have ready to go here. I just wanted to show it to you. I'm going to shrink wrap some more of this in. I'm going to wrap this up real good and tight. Put a couple more wire ties to hold this nice and tight so this doesn't have any strain on it. This is that single ridge line and the single strand and this is its uh, feeder line. It's common ground, common data line. That's how I'll have to store that every year. Um, and because it disconnects so easily it won't get such a tangled mess. And for my older hack where I uh, splice two together these two power bricks have to stay. Uh, the power and ground will power and ground the two lines separately but the grounds will all tie together both grounds tie together but the power must stay separate so that each brick is powering its own strand <clears throat> you also tie all the data lines together well now i'm going to replace this combination i'm going to take all this out cut all this out and put an rf duino in but it'll still be the same okay so this are the, this is the two that go from that from that v and hence they both have to have power they both have to have their own power break and then these are the two strands here that go off to the light bulbs, two strands of lights. And this is the wiring in the middle with no control box now. This is where the RF Duino goes. And so it'll be very much like that single strand I showed earlier, except for this is, this is why, th these, are, these are basically all, t t they're all connected to the same common point for the same common control. Um, off of one of the five volts, only one, you have to take your red wire and you do not combine your your 5 volts on any of these. All your 5 volts are completely separate. Yet all of your grounds have to be shared, including the ground where we go off, and this is the plug, to go off to my other ridge line. And so there's a common ground, which is the uh, uh, common ground that is shared with, with all these. Now, the data line has to be shared too. So this yellow goes, this yellow will go to the RF Duino, and then teed into here is these two yellow lines, and then also teed onto here is the red one, which is goes up to this connector, so it's easier to disconnect and connect that other ridge line, uh, is the data line. So common common data and uh, and on the red and common common ground on on the black. Hooking it up isn't that hard. I've got like I showed earlier. I've got my got a power my RF Duino from one of those power supplies. We have to hook up pin six on the yellow and ground goes to the ground connector. And then like the, you just unplug this to program it of course. And then that's that's it, that's hooked up. This is demonstrating all three strands working. That's the single strand that goes on the ridge line by itself. These are the two that go on in the in the V section on either hip or either side of the roof. Uh, connect to the color wheel and of course I can tap and they should see all three strands change. I'll go for green. Oops, I missed it. There's kind of a green there. There's a green, there's a red, there's a blue. And this is gonna be my case. It's an old screw, uh, drywall screw box. I think I've had for at least eight or 10 years. I've been saving it for a quick project box and here it is. Uh, drilled a hole in both sides ran the wires through. These disconnect on this side so you can disconnect this and run them all the way through and then cook them back up to these uh, these transformers. Um, I sealed the one end, the top end, with tape because that'll be the side that's facing up. Uh, the, I'm not going to seal this one yet because I have to feed that that wire in here that goes to this plug that's for that extra ridge line. Once that's in then I will uh, just put a little just a quick dab of tape around here and then I'm going to play around with the code some more, make sure I'm happy with all the code. Once I'm happy with the code, I'll lock it up and this will be this won't get wet or anything here because it'll be under an eave. But if you were someplace wet, then I would recommend putting a, some more electrical, I mean some probably some uh, duct tape around this to seal it up even more, keep it as sealed as possible if you live in a wet environment. Now, like I had said at the beginning, the software setup was the hardest part of this because there is this instructable and there's a link to it. I'll put all these notes at toddfun.com so you can follow them and this can be easy setup for you. But the Instructables left a lot out as far as getting this all together. Uh, I'm not going to go through it word by word, but uh, it's there for you. You do have to use the Ardu Ard 
Arduino IDE 1.5 or newer. You gotta go to GitHub, RFduino, RFduino, and download their library. <laughs> you go and you stick that in a very specific place underneath your Arduino IDE uh, software. I use 1.58. You have to go hardware, Arduino, and stick that file you get from this hub has to, that folder has to go in there, RFduino. Don't use the sketches from the Instructables. Use mine. I'll have a link here uh, at toddfun.com and it'll be uh, RFduino GE Christmas Lights Arduino Sketches.zip. And it'll have all the ones that are, were from the Instructables except for their change to actually be usable. Um, so they actually function as lights controls. And there'll be some backdoor coding. Uh, let's see, you unzip all that and you put that with your other Arduino code. So uh, usually Arduino defaults to, to the documents folder on a PC. You'll create an Arduino folder and, there, and in there you'll create a folders for all of your sketch work. Um, so this, that's where you'll put the, the, that folder for, that you'll download from Todd Fun. And then underneath that will be all the code in different folders. But they will show up in your IDE, your Arduino IDE. <coughs> Uh, you do have to get your iPhone. This works with an iPhone Bluetooth, so you have to download this uh, Color Wheel app. This is the link. And let's uh, final, uh, finish up quick with, uh, I showed you how to wire it up properly, so I, you really you probably want to just follow the, what I just went through for wiring it up, because it's much simpler. And then you turn on your IDE. The first thing you have to do is you have to pick the RF Duino board. Until you do that, you won't see those sketches. You pick the RF Duino board, you pick the COM port that it's hooked up to, and make sure it's plugged, our Arduino is plugged in to your computer. <laughs> and then when you do that, then and only then will these uh, sketches show up. I'm not sure why it does that, but it does. Um, and then you load in, you can, the only thing you might want, want to tweak in the sketches is if you don't have 50 lights, then change the number uh, for the number of lights to like, this is the piece of code you'll see define light count. If you don't have 50, if you have the 25, then change that to 25 and it'll enumerate correctly. As soon as you do that, then uh, you open your uh, iPhone like you saw me do, you open up that app, and your color wheel will see your RF Duino once it's plugged in and powered up and the code is running. You simply tap it and start changing your light. So that's as short as I can make that, um, but if you follow my instructions, you won't have any problems getting this code running. Okay, there's the, there's the lights with the RF Duino controlling all three strands, the upper ridge and the two over the garage. I know we're a bit far away to see the colors. We'll get closer here in a second. I was just going to bring up the uh, the app here. So I'll start my uh, color wheel app. And it sees the radio even from this distance so I can select it. And there we see. Then we can change colors so I'll go ahead and tap red. Well, that's kind of a purple actually. And I can get closer to a red there. There's a pretty good red. And there's a pretty good green. But at any rate we can control down here. Um, at the bottom. If if we go uh, all zeros then we can enter numbers here and so like this is pattern one and so you can see I have red is one and green and blue are zero that means pattern one and if I want to change to pattern two I just click the red and change it to two and then I get two. We'll see these closer in a second. I actually have a demo where if you put all zeros in so if it's uh, zeros across the board, then as soon as it has all zeros, it starts doing a demo where it does all 26, all 25 patterns, 10 seconds at a time. Uh, but if someone picks a pattern or picks a color, then it will stay that indefinite until a reboot. I do have some other features in here. Um, if you you enter uh, a special code, you can. I won't show it though, but. Uh, if you enter a special code, you can lock the lights so nobody else can control your lights. Uh, another code, you can change the, the cycle time. Right now, the cycle time defaults. When not in demo mode, it's, it cycles at two minutes per, per pattern. But you can change that here by entering a code. And, and, and the, the final code that I have in here, which again, I won't show it, because it's just you enter a special sequence of codes, and it's in the program. You'll see it if you load the program. Uh, uh, if you enter the, another special code, you can save what's there. So if I decide I want it to be green every time it boots up, or if I want a particular color to be every time it boots up, I can save all those settings with another code. 
Um, it doesn't save every time. I can do that as well if I chose to. I could make it save every time you change them, but I don't like that. I rather enter. I rather get a pattern I like, or or color, and then and then enter the save code. Uh, I like that better. So let's get up close. I'm just going to show some some just some better colors that I like, um, and then I'm going to upload a separate video that shows all 25 in demo mode, 10 seconds a piece. That way you can watch that sep separate video and not be bored here. So let's go ahead and get into. Uh, into program mode, uh, so we'll go. We'll go uh, program number one. I put them pretty much in the order I like them the most. The program. So this is we call this one Ch the Snoopy's house in Charlie Brown because we tried to match the colors and the flashing of the Snoopy's house in the Charlie Brown's Christmas t movie <laughs> TV show. This is program two, and it's sort of almost an Easter color, but I liked it a lot. And then program three. That's very Christmassy. I got that one kind of going back and forth. I don't think I care for too many more of them. Four. It's sort of a candy cane racing. I'll show one more, my favorite. I call this one silver and gold. I don't know if it shows up good on the camera, but you almost got a perfect silver and gold. And it and it kind of brightens up. The pattern is it brightens up and then it dims back down and kind of pulses real slow. And as I said, I want the uh, neighborhood to share in controlling my lights. Right now, somebody has set them to orange. Actually, it was me, but still. <laughs> so we got a bow, and I welded up a sign that I can stake in the ground here. And I'll, I'll include a PDF to this in case you want to use this exact version. And basically what it does is it tells people uh, how to download the app. I got a QR code that will download it quickly for you on an iPhone. It tells you how to connect tells you how to use it um, and then it tells you how to get to the website to learn how to build your own and so yeah people walk by they see it they have an iPhone they can control my lights well that completes the alteration of my GE lights uh, for Christmas I, I had great fun doing it uh, I'm sorry this video is getting up so late I had this going way before Thanksgiving uh, but when I got into it uh, the code just wasn't gonna work because I was grabbing code from just Arduino only controls. I was grabbing some controls from the Instructables. I was grabbing some controls for the uh, RF Duino and putting them together and making sure they all work together and, and then of course I had to rewrite all of the libraries for two reasons. One, uh, I wanted other people to be able to use my library and not and not interfere with or confuse with other people's libraries that do kind of the same thing but don't use the RF Duino. Also because there was just timing issues with the RF uh, that had to be addressed and there was program functionalities that were kind of buggy and not working so I had to go through and essentially just I essentially just went through all of the libraries that I got from others and just and just cleaned them up threw out some that weren't working uh, left a few there that I'm not using but they're there then I made it so it's easy to be able to be used with the uh, with that RF Duino uh, color wheel app hopefully someone will write a good app for this someday and then share that that would be nice but just using the color wheel app you just enter those numbers to get your different programs. And I made it so that if you go into the libraries, you can easily add uh, or remove different patterns and colors and just give it a number. And then in this one file, it calls that activity in the back end. And in that back end, you can write your own uh, patterns and colors and stuff like that. So that uh, that will be easy for other people too. Uh, that was a lot of work. That's why it was late. But it looks really good. Uh, I know... My camera doesn't show it real well outside because my camera's not good at night, but the colors look really good. I really like the patterns now. I'm probably going to reduce the number from 25 to something closer to maybe 6 for next year. Uh, just because I want it, I want to tighten up the, the look and feel of Christmas lights. And then I can have different patterns for Easter and the 4th of July and, and, and Halloween and stuff like that. So, uh, great hack. All the information is at ToddFun.com. I'll have a link to ToddFun.com in the in the video posting below. Uh, you can of course go to ToddFun.com and just search for this in the search bar. And if you want to, you can download my code and just use it as is and or change it. Share it if you want on GitHub. Uh, I don't share anything on GitHub, um, but I probably should start doing that someday. Right now I just put it up on my webpage and you can just download it. I mean on my blog post and just download it. So. Uh, thumbs up, share it, let other people know about it. Uh, there is a product you can buy that does this. There's actually a, uh, a product out there that does use an iPhone and does use an Arduino and 
it does this. You can buy it on Amazon. I'll link to that in, I actually I have an Amazon store now. So at, if you go to toddfun.com, click on the store, and in that store will be uh, a link to these lights that you can just buy from someone on Amazon that just, uh, I think it's actually made by GE actually. We'll have to double check that. But uh, they do work, they're called like Eye Twinkle. And, uh, and yeah, go check those out and you can just buy it. You don't have control like you do with this. With this hack, you can control just about everything about these lights. But with this other product, if you're not into you know, doing and making everything yourself, then this, uh, this product on Amazon will, will give you that iPhone control and, uh, and so forth. So there you go. Thanks a lot. Hope it was enjoyable. Bye.